Welcome to this first in the series of guided meditation with SRP ASMR. For today's episode, we're going to think about the human eye, its features, structures, anteriorly, internally, and externally. So first things first, just ensure you are lying down in the supine position. The eyes are closed and you're just breathing naturally. So let's think about the human right eye, your right eye. Probably going to start anteriorly. I'm not going to think about the lids and lashes today, but just the globe itself. So at the front, we're going to think about the transparent, the window to the eye, if you like. And it's understood there are five layers to this window of the eye, known medically as the cornea. So thinking about the layers, the most external layer, the one in contact with the atmosphere is the epithelium. And then we go to the thin Barman's membrane. The middle and thickest layer is the stroma. And then we have Desimant's membrane. And then the final fifth layer is the corneal endothelium. This is the layer in contact with the aqueous humour, but we'll come to this a little bit later. So bring your eye back to the front surface of the cornea. If we move to the left as we're facing your eye, notice that we have an ocular muscle there, known as the lateral rectus opposite side, the opposing ocular muscle there, is the medial rectus. Going 12 o'clock, top of the eye, the superior rectus. 6 o'clock is the inferior rectus. Located nearby is the inferior oblique. And then back to the top, it's working its way under the superior rectus, is the superior oblique ocular muscle. So that's six extra ocular muscles attached to the eye to allow up and down, left, right, diagonal and rotational ocular movements. Now we're considering the white of the eye. This is known as the sclera. This is the outer tunic of the eye. The eye is formed of three tunics. So the sclera gives the eye shape and strength. And I'm thinking about the visible area, if I'm facing you directly, I want to think about the thin conjunctival membrane there. The thin conjunctival membrane where you will find things such as goblet cells, mast cells and covering the cornea and the conjunctiva would be the tear film which has immunological properties it keeps your eye hydrated it washes away any debris that can then exit through the tear ducts upper and lower puncta. So that is a little bit about the more external areas of the eye. Obviously if we just switch to the back of the eye, if we rotate your right eye, we'll come to the optic nerve. The optic nerve is cranial nerve number two. The central retinal artery and the central 
retinal vein. We have some vessels piercing the back of the optic nerve, the uh, posterior, ciliary arteries, and you may see some veins travelling behind the eye, uh, piercing, forming the vortex veins that we can visualise when performing ophthalmoscopy of the eye. We may see the vortex veins in the peripheral zones. It doesn't matter whether you are thinking about whether the eye is hyperopic, myopic, or astigmatic. It can just be any eye in the world. So going back to the front of your right eye, um, the area in front of the iris, but behind the corneal endothelium is the anterior chamber, which is where you will find the aqueous humour. And then we talked about the iris there briefly. Doesn't matter whether the iris is blue, brown, hazel, two-tone or pigmented. It can be any iris you want it to be. So the iris is the part of the eye that controls how much light enters the eye. We'll find the sphincter and the dilate muscles within the iris. So looking at the anterior portion of the iris, you have your collarettes, you have your crypts. As we said, we may see some pigmentation of the iris. And on the slit lamp, we may see some little vessels close to the anterior part of the iris best visualised on the slit lamp. And the iris has a hole in the centre. This is known as the pupil. It doesn't matter whether the pupil is two millimetres or a very large dilated eight millimetre pupil. It doesn't matter whether it's dilated or a meiotic pupil. It can be any size you want it to be. Now the space between the edge of the iris and the sclera is where the majority of aqueous humour drains from the eye through the trabecular meshwork. That's area running 360 between the edge of the iris, the sclera, in the anterior chamber, is the trabecular meshwork. We have a nice little drainage system in the eye there, a nice drainage system. So we're going to go through the pupil now, and then we will hit the anterior crystalline lens, the anterior surface, the crystalline lens. Then we will migrate to the edges of the crystalline lens where we shall find the lens zonules attached in a 360 degree pattern which are then attached to the ciliary body. Attached to the ciliary body the ciliary body is a producer of aqueous humour that will travel past the posterior iris and the anterior lens surface through the pupil and into the anterior chamber. That it will drain, or the majority will drain, through the trabecular meshwork. 
So the ciliary body forms part of the middle tunic of the eye. This tunic is a vascular layer known as the choroid. It's known as the choroid. Now if we are working our way through the crystalline lens we're going to travel from the anterior to the posterior surface through the other side and we're into the large hollow space of the eye, the dome. This is an area you will find yourself in the vitreous humour. You are now in the vitreous humour of the eye, which normally it has a nice framework. It is pressed against the retina very nicely. And you will find hyaluronic acid in the jelly of the eye, in the vitreous humour. Okay, if you're right eye, imagine it's straight. I'm going to go straight through the pupil, the crystalline lens, dead straight. And we shall hit the central vision part of the eye. This is known as the macula. This is the macula region, your central vision area. It picks up fine details and colours nice and sharply. It is concentrated mainly of cones, a specific type of photoreceptor located in the retina, forming part of the retina. In the centre of the macula is the fovea. And then if this is your right eye, we're going to move slightly to the right of the macula, where we shall find the head of the optic nerve, approximately 1 to 1.2 million nerve fibres all congregate to form the head. The optic nerve, these nerve fibres carry the messages all the way to the back of the brain, the visual cortex area, giving you the perception that you require in order to see the world, so you actually see with your brain and not the eye. But coming back to the head of the optic nerve, this should be pink and defined. There may be some cupping on the optic nerve and we will see the blood vessels on the surface and the veins migrating out but draining the eye back through the centre through the central retinal vein so now we've found the macula and the optic nerve we're going to just explore the peripheral retina that's where we see lots of blood vessels and the vortex veins that we discussed earlier. The retina should be clear, and flat, but there may be some normal findings of pigmentation. Um, there may be some atrophic retinal holes. Um, on the retina we do not want to see any tears. We don't want to see any detachments. We don't want to see any hemorrhaging on the retina, including that on the macula, the optic nerve. We don't want to see any edema at the macula either. So the retina 
wraps all around the back in a portion of the eye which capture the light signals and then convert it to chemical energy it will travel congregate the nerve fibers the optic nerve head and then travel off on their journey so that's the end of the guided ocular meditation Let's take a few moments to relax now, keep the eyes closed. <laughs>